great grandchildren, you know, Jen Zippy the Zoop. Yeah. <laughs> Are going to look at us and say, "What you pooped in bowls of water? Yeah, bowls of water. Yeah, and you wiped your butt with paper. Yeah, like that seems barbaric." Hello and welcome back to the Crow. Thank you. And Crow Podcast. I am Spencer Garnier. I am Oolong. Ooh long. Ooh long. Ooh short. <laughs> nope. And this here is Frank. You and him bundled up. Because it's a chilly day out here in the tundra. How you guys doing? It's a beautiful Friday. Oh, man. How about Joe Biden? Thank you, Joe Biden. Joe Biden, student debt. See ya. Well, $10,000. See ya. $20,000. $30,000. More. <laughs> um, sp- I call. Uh, unpopular opinion. I wanted him to wipe it. Yeah, yeah. What it is to me, um, I'm I am um, not unfamiliar with debt collectors. Yeah, and when I owe say six thousand uh, dollars, the debt collector ca- calls me and says, "You only have to pay three thousand. and I'm like, "Awesome, I have thirty thousand <laughs> dollars." <000? laughs> okay, so it's reminding me of that. Yeah, it's definitely um, you know we're, we're starving, we want food, and it's like, "All right, I'll give you a crumb." It's like, you can have some crumbs. Well, I do need this you crumb. You won't die. Because I am starving and I'll take your crumb. You're not going to die on my watch. Now, <laughs> other other angle. Okay. People are complaining. I know. And I don't like that they're complaining. I don't know if it's because I have student debt, but I just see it as kind of selfish. It's not It's not, It's not. not Christ-like. It's not Christ-like. You don't I have mean, to be Christian to be Christ-like and it's not Christ-like. Because, no. because guess who came and paid a debt for people who supposedly didn't deserve it? Jesse. Jesse. Jesse? Jesse. Yeah. No, people. So, Jesus. So just to catch you up, people um, never want anyone to get anything if they're not getting something. Yes. And so they say, I didn't. I, I chose not to get student debt. Yeah. Uh, I'll take direct deposit, please. Yeah. And my, my biggest thing about it is, is why? Why? Like, why does it always need to be me? me, me? Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to formulate as I speak, but. There's no why. It's just... Or then, then there's a, even the people that say, I had student debt. It's like, well, I paid mine off already. Why did I do that? But it's like, it's not about you. It's not about fixing yesterday. It's about making today exactly. better. Exactly. And you could just say examples all day long. You could yeah. say people are in jail for, for for crimes that are no longer crimes. Yeah. You know, and, and you could say that people got hit by a car and now they built a bridge. And like, well, what about my child? It was hit by a car. And it's like, I know because the bridge wasn't there yet. Yeah. Um, and you could do it all day. Yeah. And it's like, oh, should um, I chose ne- – and people do make this argument and I defend it with this. is like people are like, why is my tax dollars going to Narcan? They chose to do heroin. I didn't. And I have to pay for it. Yeah. And it's like, where, where, it's, stop. 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 Everyone, um, everyone, sometimes you win the lottery and sometimes you don't. And also, sometimes and also like, so – You're cured of a disease and some other people and, aren't. And I think the one biggest thing with this particularly is people all say – you knew what you were getting into, mm-hmm. right? Like, oh, you chose to go to college. I, I, I chose. There is a much bigger problem yeah. that is American post education. Yeah, where they they give eighteen year olds forty, fifty, sixty thousand yeah. dollars loans when they would never do that anywhere else. Right, because they know that you are you don't know what you're signing up for. You don't know what you're getting into. Right, and that's a problem <laughs> in itself. So for people to just be like. It's not like, oh, we're all driving around our, our Dodge Hellcats. And it's like, you knew, you knew you were buying a car you couldn't afford. It's yeah. the education or like, you know, college and going to uni- universities is a very different problem. And that's why you hear student debt come up so much. Right. Because it's, um, it's, it's, really, it's it, was, it was taken advantage. It's yeah. taken advantage of young kids. And this is sort of the government and- stepping in and saying, yes, you guys have been taken advantage of. And education. Hopefully, this is on a path to make it eventually free or, or it, well, affordable. That's what I was going to say, because the thing that bothers me is when I came up, we had something called the GSL, which was the Guaranteed Student Loan. Yeah. And it was guaranteed. Now you have to prove that you can um, even get the loan, which the standards are kind of low. So that's why everyone got them when they didn't weren't able to afford them, just like the housing, um, the loans member back in who knows the the eights or something yeah. where they gave lo- house loans to people who couldn't afford the house loans and all the houses ended up being foreclosed on but when i grew up 
same thing happened with us. Guaranteed student loan. We all got college loans. We all went to college. None of us could pay it back. And um, they didn't get wiped. Sometimes they fell off or we worked harder to, not worked harder. We worked very hard to pay them off. But this is the difference. First of all, how come the government hasn't learned by now that, that its citizens want to be educated, but they can't afford it? First of all, that's like so obvious. Yeah. But second of all, the age that I grew up in was different than now because now things cost more and there is, we're the first, you are the first generation that has a lower standard of living than your parents. Yeah. So it, it doesn't even, first of all, it didn't work when I was there, but also it's worse now because to put you guys in debt, you can't, you can't stimulate the economy. And uh, back in the, your generation, college degrees weren't as necessary as they are now like right. yes there is a lot of jobs you can get without a college degree but far fewer than back in your day right. you could get a good job that could pay for you and your family it was totally and, different you yeah. had pensions you yeah. had you had um company loyalty Un unfortunately the 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 modern day bachelor's degree is turned into the high school diploma of old exactly it, it was there was kids, there was back in your generation, there was people who didn't finish high school right. and they'd get a trade job. Right. Then there was people who finished high school and then, oh, maybe you were And they pushed it. They would say like, you need your high school diploma. Like if, if anything, get your GED yes. because this will change your life. And and so now, and it, now that's it's sort school. of been switched. Yeah. But, 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 also, but, 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 it's, it's, it's big, but Friday. Okay. And my, <laughs> my biggest, my biggest, but <laughs> the biggest, but is. It's not just do I would I, believe me I would like to see every group get money for whatever yeah but it's like uh and if if a different you know they start giving laborers you know more money if the essential workers of COVID got more money I'll I'll, I'll be happy for anyone I'd right. like to see it, the wealth being spread but right now it's the student loan people and I'm like hooray because I'm one of them um one more thing about preying on eighteen year olds to go to college uh, who who can't afford it, but but um, they're allowed to believe that they can afford it. The other thing is false advertising to when all, so the millennials who got these these loans, even even Gen Z coming up now and they say, what about them? Like they're about to enter college or whatever, what, what? Uh, there's, they have, it's more um, transparency. Millennials were led to believe that the college degree would get them a very big paycheck. Yeah. And and they would get an assured job. And all the people who had to move back home, all the people who are working part-time jobs now, it's it's it wasn't true. So would you have gone in to this big loan at that young age and agreed to everything if you also were told you're still going to end up at the supermarket where you could have went before you got the thing? That was false advertising. False advertising. How about that? Um yeah, uh, it was a day today that I wanted to talk about, which was not dog day, which it is. Happy dog day. Um, it was toilet paper day. Toilet paper day. Toilet paper day. Well, if people want to see toilet paper, they can go on the Flushington Post, which is a really popular YouTube channel where they grade, uh, you know, A grade to F grade. Yeah. Public bathrooms in the United States. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, I did plug? see a Mexican um, person wrote that uh, in Mexico, public bathrooms don't have free toilet paper, don't have toilet paper accessible. Really? Mm -mm. My thing is I've been saying this for a long time and I want it to come true in my lifetime so that I can feel um, retributed, retributed, <laughs> retribution. Yeah. I've all. I always say. I really believe this in my heart of hearts that toilets, not as we know them, and toilet paper are going to be a thing of old, like an ice box. Why? I don't know. I, and I, I because it's technology. Okay, that, that, so you don't. I don't you don't know. Don't know what it'll be. So you well, can't invent it. But I you know invent, someone can. I can't invent it. it all right. It's like. Um, no, it's true. It's like CD, right? Yeah. Who could have thought of a CD before yeah. CD before lasers and everything? Or well, yeah. So like or Bluetooth, right? Yeah. Oh, you're going to be listening to your music. You don't plug it in. How? Through the air? Doesn't make sense. Okay. All I know is this. Okay. Great grandchildren, you know, Jen Zippy de Zoop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are going to look at us and say, What? You pooped in bowls of water. 
Yeah. Bowls of water. Yeah. And you wiped your butt with paper. Yeah. Like, that seems barbaric. That right. seems caveman y. Right. You had bowls of water in your house. Right. That you defecated in. Right. And it was just sitting there, floating. You were just pooping in a room, in a bowl of water. And then, oh, how did you get clean? <laughs> oh, well, I got some paper and I wiped my bum. Right. It was like, well, how is that? How, that's not, I can't get you clean enough. Right. It's, it's paper. Right. I don't know the answer. Okay. I just know it's going to be. Wow, you're old if you're pooping in bowls of water okay. and wiping your butt with paper. I, I, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I don't know. Maybe maybe I should really start thinking about it and I can be the one to change True. it. True. True. Because all they do now. Yeah. I'll tell you what. It's sort of like the you know the vinyl to the CD to the whatever. It's a better toilet. Right. Softer toilet paper. Better, no. The better wheel. Nix it. Oh, I said they're thinking too small. They're thinking too small. Okay. They're, 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 trying, they're trying to upgrade okay. the... The archaic okay use like there shouldn't be any of that okay I don't know if you just like walk into a chamber and it closes on you and it just does some magic I don't know Bluetooth just poof how about you swallow a pill that disintegrates it it would still have to come out somewhere yeah even if it was gas you'd have to like you'd be a lot more farty or something maybe every month you can get like you know like dialysis <laughs> sounds kind of gross. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I don't my, know the answer. My name is Oolong. Oolong, and Oolong is a T. And only today I found out that, that, that I've seen it a million times. What it means is that um, it's it's the the dry tea leaves, and they only you, they only brew it or steep it. I don't know half or maybe they I don't know they something half as long as black tea. Oh. So I guess so. Is it half as strong? Yeah. Half as long, half as strong. Half as, that's me. Half as long, half as strong. <laughs> And that's that. And that's that. Uh, Mother Teresa's birthday. Really? Yeah. You told me I don't bring birthdays up enough, so. I did? Yeah. Remember, I think I brought up uh, I brought up that guy, Patrick Swayze's birthday. And you were like, Swayze. you were like, that's a holiday? And I'm like, well, I always see the birthdays. And then you gave me Blake Lively yesterday. I did. I forgot Ryan Reynolds' name. Good. I'm not a fan. Of Ryan Reynolds? Yeah, he's a little too arrogant for me. He's a, he's a, th- there's actor types, you know. Yeah, it's the actor In the types, old days, yeah. the actors got no respect. And nowadays, it's they get more respect than, than politicians and scientists. But I think it's actually switching. I think um, like big movie stars is a dying breed with all the uh, uh, with all of the fast talk about entertainment. about old-fashioned, yeah. yeah. It's like, why why would you make less money doing more? Right. For give movies? me more. Give me more. Um. Wait. Dr. Seuss Friday for sure today. Uh, it's Dr. Seuss Friday. But we are like, I don't know how many we have left that we can, that he wrote. <laughs> yeah, we are running out. For, I feel for, new, the Fridays in the future for us should future be Fridays? fixing all the mistakes that we made in the week. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, let's just do a little one today, which is yesterday I confidently said St. Paul, Mississippi. There, uh, is no, there is no St. Paul, Mississippi. It is St. Paul, Missouri. Here we go, Missouri. So what what happens with the mistakes that we make on Friday? They'll go back, I guess, until the next Friday. Is it, <laughs> Miss, I can't believe I'm fixing it, and I can't. Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, and Missouri, but never, no, Mississippi, Missouri, never Mississippi. Anyway, see, it's because it's in is it. It's, it's, yeah, it's the beta it's version. Beta testing, but guys, it's not about Mississippi or Minnesota or Missouri. What? Do you, what is the states with the most like first letter? Would it be? I'm gonna say M right off the bat. I'm not. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna say, say M. I'm gonna and I think I win. Okay. I'm gonna say N. N. Yeah, All the news. I win. New Jersey, New Mexico, Nevada, um, New Hampshire, North, uh, Dakota. North Dakota, North Carolina, Nebraska. Did you Nebraska. say Nebraska? Sorry. I think M. Maine, Montana, Missouri, Mississippi. What's the one I just said? Missouri, Mississippi, Montana, Minnesota. Minnesota. Um, uh, I still think I won. <laughs> um, all right, guys. It is Dr. Seuss Friday. yippee ki um, On Dr. Seuss Friday, we read a Dr. Seuss book um, as adults. Thank you, Dr. Seuss. We've been adults all week, and we're going to keep being an adult as we read this Dr. Seuss book. Dr. Seuss, awesome guy from the past. Was he real? I don't know. I never saw him in real life. I never so. saw him in real life. I never saw uh, Dr. Seuss and Theodore Geisel in the same room. <laughs> Coincidence? I think not. But we read it with our adult brains because behind those wacky characters and those fun rhymes that sometimes make me stutter a bit, 
um, there's meaning and messages. And yeah. I think it's what made his his books so long lived right. and beloved by children because, yeah. you know, you, you don't realize why you like something so much. I, I would argue if you had the same characters and the same goofy rhymes with less meaning, it wouldn't have as much impact on the world. So we're going to read them as adults with our adult brains and we're going to break down what the message is behind it. And as we've come to discover, it's sort of a practice or training, if you will, for what we're meant to do with the Bible. Yes. Read the Bible with the name, the, the silly names and the yeah. wacky stories. But is that what it's about? See past it. You know, is it about the book of Judges where they're throwing rocks on people's head? Or is it about, what does that mean? Right. So on a very small scale, we're doing it with Dr. Seuss today. So without further ado, we're going to see what, I would like, I would love to see a, a receipt of how much we've spent on Dr. Seuss books. Yeah, we would love that. <laughs> so today we're reading... I had trouble in getting to Sala Salu. What? I had trouble in getting to Sala Salu. Mm-hmm. I had trouble in getting to. It's a place. So shouldn't it be, I have trouble getting to? I had trouble in getting to Wildwood, New Jersey. I don't know. Oh, well, I guess we'll find out. We'll when find we read. out. This seems like a strange one. I've never heard of this before. Never heard of it, but it's it wasn't hard. It wasn't like I didn't like eBay bid on it. I yeah. just walked into Barnes and Noble. You just walked in and bought said, it. Give me your best Doctor Seuss book. No, I just looked on the oh, shelf. Oh man, we're gonna be reading for a mile. Is it is it too much? Never too much. Okay. <laughs> I was real happy and carefree and young, and I lived in a place called the Valley of Vung. And nothing, not anything, ever went wrong. Until, well, one day I was walking along. And I guess I got careless. I guess I got gawking. At daisies and not looking where I was walking. And that's how it started. Suck, what a shock. I stubbed my big toe on a very hard rock. And I flew through the air and I went for a sail. And I sprained the main bone of the, in the tip of my tail. Now I never had ever had troubles before. So I said to myself, I don't want any more. If I watch out for rocks with my eyes straight ahead, I'll keep out of trouble forever, I said. But watching ahead, well, it just didn't work. I was watching those rocks. Then I felt a hard jerk. A very fresh green-headed quigglian quail sneaked up from in back and went after my tail. And I learned there are troubles of more than one kind. Some come from ahead and some come from behind. So I said to myself, now I'll just have to start. To be twice as careful and be twice as smart. I'll watch out for trouble in front and back sections by aiming my eyeballs in different directions. I found this to be quite a difficult stunt, but now I was safe both in back and in front. Then new troubles came from above from below. A scritz at my neck and a shrink at my toe. And now I was really in trouble, you know. The rocks and the quail and the scritz and the scrink. I had so many troubles I just couldn't think. There I was, all completely surrounded by trouble, when a chap rumbled up in a one-wheeler wobble. Young fellow, he said, what has happened to you has happened to me and to other folks too. So I'll tell you what I have decided to do. I'm off to the city of Sala Le Salou, on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. It is not very far, and my camel is strong. He'll get us there fast, so hop on, come along. I jumped up behind him then all through the day. The wobble wubbed on the wobblesome way. The road got more bumpy, more rocky, more tricky. By midnight, I tell you, my stomach felt icky. And so I said, Mr. Please, when do we get to that wonderful town? Aren't we almost there yet? Young fellow, he told me, don't start into stew. At sunrise, we'll drive in Sala Salu. And you'll have no more troubles, I promise I do. But when dawn finally came and the darkness got light, that wonderful city was nowhere in sight. Instead of the city, we ran into trouble. Our camel got sick and he started to bubble. We had to pull him on the one-wheeler wobble. So there, there we were in a dreadful position. Our camel sure needed a camel physician. Now doctors for camels are not often seen, especially on mountains. They're far, far between. But we pulled that old wobble and set out to find some doctor while dragging our camel behind. I pulled up, pulled and pulled. The next thing I knew, I was pulling the camel and the wobble chap too. Now really, I thought, this is rather unfair. But he said, don't you stew, I'm doing my share. 
This is called teamwork. I furnish the brains. You furnish the muscle, the aches and the pains. I'll pick the best roads, tell you just where to go, and we'll find a good doctor more quickly, you know. Then he sat and he worked with his brain and his tongue, and he bossed me around just because I was young. Told me to go left, then he told me to go right, and that's what he told me all day and all night. Next morning we located Dr. Sam Snell, who knew all about tonsils and camels as well. Our camel, he said, had a bad case of gleeks, and I shouldn't and I should lie flat in bed for at least twenty weeks. I was tired how I wanted to crawl on that bed, but that wobble chap sent me away and he said, Your troubles are practically all at an end. Just run down the hill and around the next bend, and you'll come to the happy way bus route, my friend. The happy way bus leaves at four forty two and will take you directly to Sala Salu, on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where they never have troubles, at least very few. Well, the bus stop was there, and that part was just fine, but tacked on a stick was a very small sign, saying, Notice to passengers using our line. We are sorry to say that our driver, Butch Myers, ran over four nails and has punctured all tires, so until further notice, the 442 cannot possibly take you to Sala Salu. But I wish you a most pleasant journey by feet, signed Bus Line, Mr. President, Horace P. Sweet. So I went on by feet, thanks to Horace P. Sweet, and that Horace P. Sweet almost ruined my feet. A hundred mile later, my feet were so sore, then wouldn't you know, it started to pour. I was drenched to the skin when a chap in a slicker splashed up and he yelled, It's the midwinter jicker. The midwinter jicker came early this year. And it's not going to be very comfy around here. Any fool would get out, so I packed up my things, and I'm off to my granddaddy's out in Palm Springs. Take cover, he yelled. Use my house if you wish. Then the chap in the, sl- in the slicker splashed off like a flit- sh- fish. I ran in the house, and I fell in a heap. I needed my rest, but I just couldn't sleep. Did you ever sleep when your feet were like ice, with a family of owls and a family of mice? I listened all night to the growls and the yells, and the chattering teeth and those mice and those owls. While the midwinter jicker howled horrible howls, I tossed and I flipped and I flopped and I flipped. It was a quarter past five when I finally slept. Then I dreamed I was sleeping on billowy billows, of soft silk and satin marshmallow stuffed pillows. I dreamed I was sleeping in Sala Salu, on the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where there never have troubles, at least very few. Then I woke up and it just wasn't true. I was crashing down a hill in a flubbeless flood with suds in my eyes and a mouthful of mud and my nose full of water and my ears full of shrieks of the owls flying off with the mice on their beaks. And I said to myself, now I really don't see why troubles like this have to happen to me. I floated 12 days without toothpaste or soap. I practically almost had given up hope when somebody up high shouted, here, catch the rope. Then I knew that my troubles had come to an end. And I climbed up the rope calling, thank you, my friend. I got to the top, but it wasn't a friend. And I saw that my troubles were not at an end. A big man on a horse scared me out of my wits. He bellowed, I'm General Gongus Khan Schmitz. There's a war going on and it's time that you knew. Every lad in this land had a duty to do. We're marching to battle, we need you, my boy. We're about to attack and we're about to destroy. The perilous poozer of Pomplemus Pass. So get in line, you're a private first class. He gave me a shooter and one little bean, which was not very much, if you know what I mean. Then he yelled, get that poozer, attack without fear. The glorious moment of victory is near. And the glorious general led the advance with a glorious swish of the sword and his lance. And a glorious clank of his tin-plated pants. Then we went round a corner and found that, alas, there was more than one poozer in Pomplemousse Pass, and Genghis Khan Schmitz shouted out to his men, This happens in war every now and again. Sometimes you are winners, sometimes you are losers. We never can win against so many poozers. And so I suggest that it's time to retreat, and the army raced off on its tin-plated feet. There I was with more poozers than I'd ever seen. There I was with my shooter and only one bean. There I was and I thought, will I ever get through to that wonderful city of Sala Salu, on the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, where there never were troubles, at least very few. I had terrible trouble in staying alive. Then I saw an old pipe that said vent number five. I didn't have time to find out what that meant, 
but the vent had a hole and the holes where I went. Well, that vent where I went was sort of a funnel that led me down into a frightful black tunnel. The traffic down there was a mess, I must say, with billions of birds going all the wrong way. They bumped me with bikes and they banged me with dishes. I ran into ladders, beds, bottles, and fishes. I skidded on garbage. I fell on a horn. Troubles, I wish I had never been born. I was down there three days in that bird-filled-up place. At least 8,000 times I fell smack on my face. I injured three fingers, both thumbs and both lips, my shin bone, my backbone, my wishbone, and hips. What's more, I was starved. I had nothing to eat. And damp was it damp. I grew moss on my feet. Then just when I thought I could stand it no more, by chance I discovered a tiny trap door. I popped my head out. The great sky was great sky blue, and I knew from the flowers I had finally come through. To the banks of the beautiful River Wahoo, I couldn't be far now from Sala Salu. There it was, with its glittering towers in the air. I made it, I'd done it, at last I was there. And I knew that I left all my troubles behind, when a chap at the doorway that shimmered and shined, waved me a wave that was friendly and kind. Welcome, he said, and gave me his hand. Welcome, my son, to this beautiful land. Welcome to sweet, sunny Sala Salu, where we never have troubles, at least very few. As a matter of fact, we have only just one. Imagine just one little trouble, my son. And this only trouble, as you will now see, is this one little trouble I have with this key. There is only one door into Sala Salu, and we have a key slapping slippered, we do. This troublesome slippered moved into my door two weeks ago Tuesday and a quarter to four. Since then I can't open this door anymore, and I can't kill that slippered is very bad luck. To kill any slippered, and that's why we're stuck. And why no one gets in and the town's gone to pot, it's a terrible state of affairs, is it not? And so, said the doorman of Sala Salu, my job at this door here is finished, I'm through, and I'll tell you what I've decided to do. I'm leaving, he said, leaving Sala Salu, on the banks of the beautiful river Wahoo, where we never have troubles, at least very few, and I'm off to the city of Bula Bubal, on the banks of the beautiful river Wuhual, where they never have troubles, no troubles at all, Come along with me, he said, as he ran, and you'll never have any more troubles, young man. I'd have no more troubles, that's what the man said. So I started to go, but I didn't instead. I did some quick thinking inside of my head. Then I started back home to the Valley of Vung. I know I'll have troubles, I maybe will get stung. I'll always have troubles, I'll maybe get bit by that green-headed quail on the place where I sit. But I've bought a big bat. I'm already, you see, now my troubles are going to have troubles with me. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa, he turned into a little badass at the end there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. I just see, like, all the little college graduates, you know, and they, yeah. like, go in to look for a better life and, like, these people taking advantage of them, taking their money, putting them in debt. Yeah. And now all you guys are marching back and fighting any of your bats and you're like yeah yeah i owe you you owe me oh <laughs> oh yeah no i i like it um you know i think we always say of like this idea of happiness and that if i had this yes if i if i had the money yeah if i had the job the wife the kids and it's like when you're chasing that and it's right, like chasing yeah well I'm, pa- I'm paycheck to paycheck right now uh, I, I i you always making complaints and you go searching for that yeah and then you realize that there's like once you're there you know you go through all the trouble to get there and then what there's more problems there right Right. and it's always the next thing right and even when you get to wallahu if you look at it like financially right yeah you you make the money you thought you want to make then it's like oh this there's problems at at this money amount yeah i'm going over here to be a billionaire (laughs) and it's like are you going to keep chasing that or are you going to go back and then understand that it's it was never about the idea of, of of anything being better just by being there right is, is is wrong it's like you can be happy wherever you are as long as you have the right mindset right and i mean it was a little aggressive with the bat at the end but well that's really it's like tackle your problems don't yeah. don't run don't you have problems right now in whatever you can handle those problems yeah you don't need to say if i did this i wouldn't have the problems right. anymore it's like right well you'd have new problems yeah be right here and handle the problems that you have and then continue on. Yeah, because the energy expended 
Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, it's not good here. I'm going to go where there's no problems. But then he expended so much energy on that journey, which if that energy had just been expended. Exactly. In the beginning. It's a journey that never ends. Like, yeah. and, and I think it always is saying like, the idea is, is, is pretty common to want to be passively um, like happy. Right. And I think this shows he just wants to walk along and not have any problems. There's right. always going to be problems. Right. And so you can always try to find a place or a, a type of, of living yeah. without problems or you can handle your problems. Right. And one of them will have an answer to it. Um, for one second, did you feel that Dr. Seuss was finally just going to give us a happy ending? I did when when he was like, oh, uh, yeah, there. I know. It was great. I was like, I, know. I can't believe it. Dr. Seuss is just letting the child go to bed. Happy. It was like, well, yeah. One little problem. <laughs> I know. That's, when I thought, I'm like, this is too good. And I was like racking my head. I'm like, all right, my new th- theory is he actually died. Oh, okay. Okay. He died by those dogs or oh, whatever they were. Oh, it was heaven. And then the tunnel was like. Oh, yeah. He was stuck in there and he opens up and it's like, hello, you're here. And it's like uh, the whole time. Yeah. You know, the only place with no problems is heaven. But That's too easy for, for Theodore. That's too easy for Theodore. <laughs> all right, guys. That is it for Dr. Seuss Friday. We're going to come back at you so hard next week. You're not even going to be ready for it. Well, what, did, what did the guy say? The, 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 you, the, you know. Uh, we're coming back with a bat. Yeah. <laughs> we're not running this time. We're coming back right. with a bat. All right, guys. Peace, love, and prosperity. Go out and get your student loans replaced. Peace. Replaced, Spencer.